Um, you, talk to me about why you chose email rather than you know sharing what you do on TikTok or somewhere else. Um, why that channel? Mm, very interesting. Um, when f fundamentally, when I had the idea for this, um, I was it was around about the time when email newsletters were becoming really popular yeah. as businesses. So there were there were uh, companies running standalone email newsletters as a business. Uh, the really really big ones out there now are things like Morning Brew or The Hustle, which was acquired by HubSpot. Like really really serious email newsletters, like publishing every day, millions of readers. Um, and they're like publishers, deal. aren't they? That's a good yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, they're essentially yeah. like media outlets. They're, they're, yeah. they're huge. Um, they're not just an email. Um, and at the same time, I was taking a little bit of inspiration from uh, a company, uh, an email newsletter organization in the UK called Jack's Flight Club. Um, there, now there's there's versions of this around the world like in in the us they have uh dollar flight club or matt's cheap flights or scott's scott's cheap flights and they're essentially like flight hacking alerts so yeah. you know when when a when the price of a flight dips you'll they'll get they'll email everybody and, and let them know um and i was looking at it from the perspective of why can this not exist for long-term accommodation deals for digital nomads because nice. they, people were doing it for flights. Some people were doing it for holidays, um, but there wasn't really something that was specific for digital nomads. So that was the, f the first thing. And I thought about other channels. I thought about Facebook groups and, uh, you know, or there's a plethora, right? Like I could just run this as a, run this, like you said, as a TikTok account, but I know people who don't have a TikTok account. And mm. I know a different group of people who don't use Instagram and a different group of people who don't use Facebook. Yeah, but Will, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you know a single person who doesn't have an email address? I do not know a single person. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so for me, for me, it was that it was about distribution and and it was about yeah. um, good. It was about being able to guarantee access and own the audience um, and not rely on the other people's algorithms to to get in nice. front of people. Um, and that was kind of it. That from that point, things progressed from there, and and that was why I chose the channel that I chose. Right, and how how did you grow it? Have you got any tips for email growth? Yeah, this is a this is an interesting question. The the newsletters are around five k subscribers. Um, so oh, you know you look cool. at that against the backdrop of uh, Instagram influencers or uh, people on YouTube with like hundreds of thousands or millions of followers, and it's it's a fraction of that, um, and that's absolutely okay because I own the audience. Um, yeah. And so in terms of growth, I think you have to look at newsletters as like a two part process. One is content uh, and the other one is distribution. And if you if you nail the content, brands brands often are poorer with the content side, but they're really good with distribution because they're selling a product or they're selling a service and they're collecting an email. So the distribution is, is covered, but maybe they suck up the content. The flip side of that is if you're a personal brand or just a standalone newsletter business, you probably have really, really good content, but your distribution probably sucks. And the way to fix that, it varies based on the size of your audience. If you're like zero to a thousand subscribers, I think you just have to get your hands dirty a bit and be in the forums, be in places. Like I often use this example of like a, a newsletter about knitting where sometimes you have to go really, really unscalable and you have to go offline. It's like if you're running, if you, if I wanted to start a newsletter about knitting tomorrow, I would go to every knitting club in my area or every yeah. like weekly uh, knitting night. Uh, and, you have and, to really show up it. in your niche, don't you? I, exactly, I've seen a exactly. lot of that in, in that world. Yeah. And it's as it scales, the, the tactics change. So once you get to a thousand and you go from maybe like 1,000 to 5,000 people, um, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be so unscalable uh at that point you can start to use more organic content you can introduce referral systems partnerships stuff like that and, yeah. and cross collaborate and if you show up with a personality that will become its own uh its own growth system um if you yeah build a, a good foundation of of readership 
uh, that will become its own growth system, uh, and you can leverage that with with things like referral systems. And once you get past that into like, like 5K plus, then you can start to do the more traditional met, uh, traditional tactics with like paid growth. Um, and then as you get to like 10K and above, that's when you can really start to deploy super scalable tactics like acquiring other digital assets um, or go really long on brand partnerships and, and other distribution channels. Yeah, nice. So it depends, really... depends where you are and where you're starting your growth from. Yeah, that's a really nice rundown. 